Welcome to the opening bell of the NFL Stock Exchange Podcast. I'm Trevor Sikama. That is Connor Rogers. Joining you guys on a, you guessed it, Mock Draft Monday, baby. The time has finally come. All right, we've got the final draft order for at least the nine playoff teams. As you are listening to this podcast, there's a couple of extra teams that have been eliminated in the playoffs but we don't know all of them yet we've got one more game back in super or super wild card weekend but we still wanted to get you guys a mock draft it's about time it's time to do it we talked about it for forever so this is connor's idea you got to give him some props we're gonna have some fun today connor how you feeling my friend i'm good dude i'm feeling good i'm feeling better um i'm excited for the teams with that didn't get the joy of the playoff game get something a little different. They get their first real authentic, I think, mock draft of the season for us of the new year uh, with some trades, with some excitement. All the talk has already started. We've noticed it. We've noticed it with the with the audience and we're yes. really, really excited. So, yeah, this is this is the right time to really open up this intro. First of all, shout out to you guys for the last two episodes of this podcast going like nuclear in the comment section. I, I spent nuclear. so long reading you guys's theories on what you want your team to do different ways. The NFL draft could go. You know, we talked about uh, on the, what was it? The Thursday edition of the show where we each gave five team player connections that we would like to see. There were so many different thoughts on what we gave. There's so many thoughts that you guys gave. And then of course the Wednesday episode where we talked about the final draft order for the non-playoff teams, you guys went crazy on that too. And I had so much fun reading all those comments. So please, if you, if you got ideas, this is your space. This is your community. Please keep them coming. I absolutely love reading them. So good shout out there from Connor as well. Wanted to make sure that we got that off in the show. So like we said, we're recording this on Sunday night. Right now, the Bengals are currently playing the Baltimore Ravens. And Connor, I must say, your boy put a decent amount of change on Trenner when catching just one pass for at least seven and a half yards. So I will be sweating during this podcast. Oh, God. I need one catch, Trenton. One. His his over-under was set at seven and a half yards. Yes. Those and are he, the best. Those are the best props. And he's hit it in eight of his last nine games. Man, those are the best props because you're always alive. It's one play. It's <laughs> that's why they're my favorite props. Like there's certain props. Like if you go with a running back over or under, that's like Saquon Barkley. You're like you. You could be out of gas by the third quarter. He, he could he could finish it by halftime, and you're like, okay, that was fun. With a play like a player like that, it could come down to the game winning drive, and that's what's so much fun about those low scale player props. We are one drive into this game. I just looked up the the stats of the one drive. Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, Joe Mixon, and Jamar Chase all have catches already. I have it on, and I've you seen know them what all that means, plays. baby. Trends getting into the rotation. Let's see it. Joey, uh, Joey spreads the ball around. Yeah, it's it's got to happen. It. It's got to happen. The man has a knack for touchdowns too. So just wait till they get to the red, and we'll do the celebration. So for those teams that have already um, been eliminated, the Los Angeles Chargers, cool. the Miami Dolphins, oh, the, the Minnesota. You want Vikings. to talk about losing a bet? There's a chance. So I, I did Man. a, sorry to cut you off. No, There's, go ahead. Go ahead. I, what I like to do with opening round of the playoffs is I like to just do a straight uh, round Robin so I can miss one, okay. but I pick every single, every single game and I just put them all together. It's like fun. You put like 50 bucks on it. Right, whatever. Sure. Yeah. I, as we sit here and record this, there is a very good chance. The chargers meltdown is the difference of me winning like well over $500. I'll keep it at that. Th that meltdown is the difference. It's just like, you got to laugh. Like it's, that's, that's betting, but I, we're, we're not doing, we're not doing what matters most, obviously. So we're not like talking about these games, but yeah, that, that, that chargers meltdown is truly historic. What were they plus five in the turnover category? At one point they were plus five. I don't know if they ended the game plus five, plus five in the turnover category. We're up 27 to nothing at one point in the oh, game out there. And they absolutely lose. Who's out there? Oh, Ooh. no. Is that Hayden Hurst? God, don't do that to me. Sorry. All right. We can't Sorry. do this. We can't do Sorry. this. Let's we get into the it. mock. We're getting okay. into the mock. So what I was <laughs> trying to say was before the sweating began was we're not doing the mock draft for those teams. We're only doing the 18 non-playoff teams or the 18 non-playoff draft positions, as I should say. So it's not a full first round mock draft, but it is, we think, for the teams that really care the most, the fan bases that really care the most about this one. Trades are live. We will let trades happen. And what we have normally done on this podcast is kind of reserve trades in mock draft Monday episodes for 
you know, late February, really yeah. late March into April, because we don't know what's going to happen at the combine. We don't know what's going to happen with free agency. But with Chicago holding that number one pick, it almost feels disingenuous to not do trades in a mock. So we're going to have some fun with it. I think this is probably the earliest that you and I have ever done a mock with trades. So let's just do it. Let's get into it. Uh, we'll do. We'll go back and forth. We'll go odds and evens like we always do. Oh, it feels so good to be back. It feels so good to be saying that back in the mock draft so comfortable. season. You're picking odds. I'm picking evens which means you have the Chicago Bears at number one. I will give you the floor. You can talk about their options, talk about what could happen. And then uh, I think we got a deal to make here one way or another. There's a lot of suitors here, whether it's an even team that I'm picking, whether it's an odd team that you're picking, I think we can make a deal happen here. So what, what do you think with Chicago Bears at number one? So their options are, are kind of cut and dried right now, right? There's the very obvious of if they stay, Will Anderson, to me, is the best player in the draft, a position in need for them edge rusher. That's an option. I wouldn't rule out Jalen Carter entirely. There is the way less likelier option if they stay. That they they do evaluate these quarterbacks. They do see a scenario where, you know, and I, I don't think a lot of people will expect this, but there was a world where Ryan Poles, who didn't draft Justin Fields, does all his quarterback grades and you know, whether it's Bryce or whoever, probably Bryce, mm -hmm. is so drastically graded higher than Justin Fields that they consider that option. I don't expect that, but I just want to lay out every single option that teams have to go through throughout the draft. And then there's, of course, the option that I think you and I are going to end up on on this podcast, and, and that is you hold an auction for this selection. While my personal preference is still keeping in mind you can't go too far back because you're a franchise right now that doesn't have a lot of blue chip talent that has one of the worst defenses in the entire league that needs to walk away from this draft capitalizing on one of its strengths and getting a talent that is going to significantly help you within two years not three to four sure. so with that being said trevor I know I'm picking odds, you're picking evens. I, I kind of want your thoughts on this. I eye the Indianapolis Colts at four as the perfect match in a scenario where, assuming that Houston doesn't want to pick swap, and we'll save that combo for another day. The Colts are a situation where I think I could squeeze a lot of capital out of them while I'm also going back to four, and I think that one of Carter or Anderson could be there for me. What do you think of that idea? Yeah, so I'm controlling an evens team, so I got the Indianapolis Colts. I I certainly like this idea. Um, if you're Indianapolis, I think the way that you have to look at it is it's not just Houston at two, right? You can't sit there and think, oh, the Chicago Bears probably aren't going to pick a quarterback. You can't sit there and say, oh, the Arizona Cardinals probably aren't going to pick a quarterback. You, in your mind, have to be ready, and of course, there's intel that you do the combine throughout the offseason, all that. But you've got to basically be ready for Chicago to trade back with the team looking to get up for a quarterback because it makes too much sense. Vegas is sitting there at seven. Atlanta's sitting there at eight if they're thinking about it. Carolina's sitting there at nine. Um, plenty of teams outside of the top 10 as well who might get super aggressive, just see what the asking price is. And then there's it, it's the same thing with Arizona. We're, we're, we're spending a lot of time talking about Chicago at the top because it's the shiny new car the thing in the garage that you love to talk about it's the thing you love to show off you like to you like to base the conversations around chicago but in reality yes arizona needs a really good player so does chicago right you just got done saying that like chicago needs a will anderson they need a jalen carter and arizona is going to have that same debate of are one of those guys worth a serious haul that white we might be able to get get for not moving too far back. So um, I think that Indianapolis is going to get aggressive. And somebody actually reached out to me on Instagram and said, hey, I think the uh, Colts presser with Ballard is getting a little blown out of proportion. They were saying that it's not like Ballard was simply saying, like, we're going to do whatever it takes to get a quarterback, like, no matter what. I think it was the context of it and the full interview of it was basically saying like, hey, if there is a guy that we love more than another player in this draft class, then we're going to go up and get our guy. But he didn't necessarily say we're going to go all out no matter what for Will Levis, for Bryce Young, for CJ Stroud. It was basically we're going to evaluate these guys. And if one of them we think is head and shoulders above the other and we don't think we can get him at four, 
then you get into that, we've got to go get our guy kind of a mode. But I think that they do end up there. So I think that we're talking about multiple first round picks, even to move from one to four. I think the bidding war is going to get higher. And I think that Chicago is going to need probably next year's first, even to move up just three spots. But I think so, in this yeah. scenario, we should probably pull that trigger just to see what the reality is. Do you agree? I do. I, where do you want to ultimately land on this for, for, for now? Here's why this is a hard trade to outline right now. We don't know how many teams would be involved in this. Right, where right. We sit here today and you do it in a vacuum. You go, oh, well, well four to one. Say so they pick swap and yeah, the trade that I always go back to, and this is this is not comparable because of the situation, but when the Jets went from six to three with the Colts two months before the draft, they gave them they pick swapped and they gave them three twos. I think mm-hmm. this to me four to one is drastically different because more teams will be in on going to one. Yes. And you are going to one. So let's not forget that year the Jets had the risk of the Browns and the Giants in front of them. They Mm -hmm. just needed a quarterback. That was their strategy. Get a quarterback in a quarterback-rich class at the time. So for the Colts here, this isn't a one-man class. Like There's things to like about Stroud and Levis and Richardson, but I I don't know. Either way, you you love the idea of going up and getting your guy. Yeah. And and I think it's going to be Bryce, though. I I do too. I really do. But now the question is, what does that cost today without a million teams in this bidding war? Is it a pick swap and a 2024 first? Is it a pick swap and 35 this year and and that first next year? No. Like, am I, I off the rails? That seems a little high. No, no, no. That seems high. I... I ultimately feel like we would land on, and this is obviously the thing that everyone's going to nitpick about the podcast. Yeah, that's why I'm being so delicate with it. But yeah, there's no winning here for us. Of course, we're trying to, we're not necessarily saying what we would do. Um, We're kind of trying to analyze what we actually think might happen. And Mm -hmm. I do find it hard to believe that Chicago would move out of one for anything less than a one. So I do think that, even though you said, what if there's not a bidding war? I just think there's going to be a bidding war. So if we're going to do this right, the right way, we kind of have to bring it into a realistic point of view to where Carolina is going to be offering ones. Uh, Vegas is going to be offering ones, right? Like other teams outside of the top 10 are going to be offering ones. And then are you going to be okay with going, yeah, sure, we'll go from one to four for two twos with Indianapolis. Maybe you will because you think you're going to get Anderson and Carter. But at this point in time, I mean, Ballard's been kind of stingy before. We saw that with the Matthew Stafford trade, so maybe he will be again. But just to kind of keep this thing rolling, let's say they just give up next year's one. Like, it's okay. the first, it's four this year, and it's next year's one, and that's it. Boom. It's a clean thing. If you're getting your franchise quarterback, it doesn't matter. Maybe Chicago gives them, like, next year's third or something, right? Like, they get the next year's first, and then Indy gets a third back from next year. Maybe that's end up what ends up happening. But let's just say it's a one and a one, and maybe Chicago gives something back. But I'll say, well, actually, you know, you get you get the pick at one still, um, I think. Or do you want me to make the pick at one? How do we want to do this? Is this my team? You, you get, this is your team. You get to oh. make the pick at one, and I will ultimately pick um, three, four, and five. Look at In me! High, look at me hijacking the pod. I'm gonna go Bryce Young then. I'm just I'm yeah. gonna go with Bryce Young. Um, you know, Jamie Eisner from the Draft Network tweeted this a couple of days ago, and I thought it was very interesting. He said, "Will Levis's odds to be the number one overall pick have gone from 22 to one to nine to one on FanDuel, and 20 to one down to 10 to one on DraftKings since last night?" Is it was his tweet, and that was uh, a couple of days ago. So they're learning something. You know, for all the people, yes that- and no. I've learned a lot about the markets over the last year, not to sound like an expert here, oh, but here. they there are certain markets like the draft that the bookmakers can have information on mm-hmm. and can also sway strategically or can sway due to the general public. I wonder if when this happened, there was a couple tickets that came in because Levis was what? What'd you say? It was a two plus two thousand, right? Uh, 20 to- he was uh, twenty two to one, and then twenty to one. I mean, those are hail marys. 
Um, I wonder if a couple tickets came in because of the value there and then they overcorrected. Mm -hmm. These are things that happen a lot. So what I'm trying to say is, and I, I'm Mr. on this pod, Will Levis, you are a cult. It's oh, of one course, of right. running jokes on this pod. It would not shock me knowing what Chris Ballard likes in quarterbacks if, if they love if they love Will Levis. But I do. Th I saw that tweet, and, and I, Jamie does a really, obviously, you know, really good job. Um, those are tricky. Those markets—they're very tricky this time of year. Look, if Trent Werwin gets one catch tonight, I'm I'm going to be the betting <laughs> expert here, and and you you guys can just listen to me. But I, look, I'll still say for now, I'll still I'll say that they're moving up for Bryce. Bryce has just been too good over the yeah. last couple of years. Logical. Uh, obviously, the, the the size concerns are there with them, but um, no better playmaker in college football. No better. And if you're moving up to number one, I still think that Bryce should be the number one overall pick. And so even with the team moving up for him, until we really hear otherwise, I'm going to keep it as Bryce Young. So Colts moving up from four to one, probably giving up next year's one, maybe getting something as a late day two pick back for it, going up to get uh, what they hope is that their franchise quarterback and Bryce Young. So then I am up again with the Texans at number right. two. <sighs> You got a situation on your hands here, partner. I do. I don't envy you. I'm gonna take Stroud. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you got it. You got to take Stroud. I was so encouraged by what we saw from him in the college football playoff. Man, uh, they they make that kick at the end, and granted, it's a long kick. It's not like it was a gimme of a kick. Um, but if they make that kick at the end, it's a it goes from a great game from C.J. Stroud to a heroic game from C.J. Stroud. He plays for the national championship, and we'd probably be talking right here about him being the MVP of the college football playoff and a national champion. So I'm not going to let a missed field goal get in the way of what was a phenomenal C.J. Stroud performance. I don't want to be too much of a prisoner in the moment, but I do think he's got really nice ability. I like the fact that I could put my imagination to rest and what he could, he could do under pressure. Could he play well under pressure? And he did against a really damn good Georgia team. One that we saw absolutely dismantled TCU. So I'm still going to go with CJ Stroud at number two here. Although the, the Texans certainly have the ability to move in this draft as well. I, I just think they've got to solidify themselves a quarterback. So I'm going to go Stroud. The title game was so bad. Did you realize on this NFL draft podcast, we never even uttered a word about it? What about what are we gonna say, brother? What matters? What matters most for the title game? Um, <laughs> Nobody cared. TCU should bad. have been eight and four. That's what mattered most. Oh man, sorry, folks. It's just, sorry. It's just I, I. It made me laugh when you brought it you up. Know, I was like, wow, we never even muttered a word about that. You know what that reminded me of? That national championship game. When a two beats a fifteen, no, no, no. When a fifteen beats a two in March Madness, mm -hmm. and everybody loses their damn mind. And then they get absolutely blown out against the nine seed or whoever it is that they play after that. Why well, I can't remember. Yeah, when it like self corrects, whatever the whatever the math works. I can't remember who the next. Yeah, we don't. Team we don't do a play. lot of math on this show. But it, that that's what it reminded me of. TCU had comp. just this like incredible season that went their way in in a lot of different ways. They don't even win the Big Twelve championship. They probably should have lost to Kansas. Like there were a bunch of things that I, I don't want to take anything away from them. But let's face it. They, they sucked. Got, no, they I'm just got kidding. I'm just kidding. They got worked. Uh, and so that's what it reminded me of is, is when everybody in the opening weekend of March Madness loves when the 14s or the 15s or the 16s can beat the higher seeds, but then it's like the next game goes, oh, right. That's, yeah, that's, that's it's the It's the reaping sowing meme. It Correct. really is. Correct. It is. <laughs> this really is awesome. Was. Wait, this sucks. You asked for this. <laughs> All right, see, you're up with the Cardinals. You're up with the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, we got back-to-back -back quarterbacks. Bryce Young first, CJ Stroud second. Easiest pick of the draft right here. I'm wait, going wait, wait, with... wait, wait, wait. Can I propose you a trade? You can. I'm probably hanging up the phone, but you could absolutely dial the number. What do you got? What about the Lions? Okay. So all you got to do is move from three to six. Okay. I give you number 49 in the second round this year. And number 49 and, and the second round pick next year. So you get two seconds. So you still get, so you still get six. And then you get two second round picks for your Arizona. What do we think? You don't got to do it. You don't got to do it. You don't got to do it. But still a no for me, dog, ah, because, because Chicago, Seattle, 
are after me in the spot. If I move back to six, I'm not getting one of Will Anderson, Jalen Carter. I could even continue to miss on more. I am smiling ear to ear with this grin that I, if I'm the Cardinals, that I, with this new regime, start over with Will Anderson as my franchise player. Mm. I happily take Will Anderson third overall. All right. What if I gave you six and 18? He's pushing, folks. You, that now that is fascinating. I I I I don't think they would do that. I don't think. And I, crazily enough, am not still overly excited. I really think there's that kind of drop off in this class. Hmm. I I think I am Arizona. I really want the blue chip player at the Look, top. And, yeah, that's. Go, I, I was just about to say that's that's why I proposed it from the Lions perspective is to go up into oh, that range to get the great idea. dominant guys. Great so. idea. All right. And I'm back on the clock. Oh, yeah. You got to you got to get the Bears here. pick. You get a little run here. Yeah. So this is this starts to, you know, kind of. Take shape. This would have been a, an interesting conversation if a guy like I think if Olu Fashanu was in this class, it would have been an interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. But instead, I, I'm going to take Jalen Carter here for the Bears. Smart. They Smart. they need help on the front. He's a great player. Um, this defense, it needs help from front to back, although it definitely needs the majority of its help all the way up front. He's that kind of guy from point A to B, rushing on the inside that could really wreck a game. And, I mean, they just they have to find players like that. So Jalen Carter um comes off the board at four so now we are sitting here we've had bryce young cj stroud will anderson jalen carter go yep nothing too shocking there with them in the top four number five though with seattle is where things get a little bit more interesting right mm -hmm. you have a team that if you watch the playoffs and you didn't need to watch the playoffs to know this they need some help on defense still they have a deep vertical passing attack with geno smith they have a young offensive line they have a good run game with kenneth walker they need some more help on defense. And yes, they will get Jamal Adams back next year. They have some athleticism in the middle of the field with Jordan Brooks, Tariq mm -hmm. Woolen on the outside. I just think they need bodies up front on this defensive line, Trevor. And this is where actually I go with Brian Brzee. Um, and maybe okay. that's a maybe that surprises people a little bit, but I think their interior is going to need a lot of help this offseason. And I I like I like Miles Murphy as well in this spot. Tyree Wilson really fits the profile of the kind of player they like. But I just feel so good about Brazil being the next guy off here uh, for the middle of this defense to help stop the run. Look, Brazil is a unique dude. Um, Very gifted player. He is a super gifted player. Just not, he. I mean, what is he? 6'4", 300. And he just moves so well. He's got so much natural strength. He's got so much natural athleticism. He's a really good player. I, I don't really know where he's going to go. I feel like he's destined for somewhere in the top 12, but I can't quite put my finger on like Same. where the NFL is really going to value him, given the fact that he just didn't have a lot of production at all at Clemson. And yeah. that's concerning. You didn't, you didn't get to right 10 word. sacks. No, no, right, right. And so that's – then. You look at that, right? That's that's something that you you wonder why the production wasn't there. Now you can look at with the tape and you can see a lot of what Clemson does, and they try to use both him and Miles Murphy and other guys along the defensive line to take up a lot of gaps, leave the linebackers very free. You know, they got Trent Simpson, they've got Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Like those two guys are at the second level. And Clemson knows damn well that if you keep those linebackers free, if you keep them clean, they're gonna they're gonna clean up the tackles for you. They're gonna they're gonna be able to shoot the open gaps. They're gonna be able to get to the rush lanes because those guys are really athletic, good linebacker prospects. So, I, I understand why Clemson operated the way that they did. It just makes it difficult to um, evaluate overall. That's why I don't know if Brian Brzee is gonna go this high, but certainly I could see a team really investing in his unique athleticism. So him at five, I mean that's it. That's an interesting case. And if you think that Seattle wants to go interior defensive line, then he's certainly the, the, the next guy off the board. After Jalen Carter, full, full transparency, I, I would have taken Jared Verse with this pick, which is very frustrating. It's too soon, Connor. Yeah, it's very frustrating. Soon. It's too soon. So. Detroit Lions at six. Mm. Man, Braz Brazil's normally a good that spot was, for them too. Yeah, I thought I was going to say that they would probably like to have him in the middle of that defense. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jackass. Um, 
You know, I think a lot of people just generally go like a Miles Murphy around this spot, but I feel like it'd be insulting to do that for the Detroit Lions because of how well Aiden Hutchinson really finished out the year and how incredible it was that James Houston was playing in a situational role. So I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure they do that. Maybe they still do. What about Christian Gonzalez here? You're right in the range saying it right now. I mean, I think that that's, that's like the start of where we're talking about Christian Gonzalez, yep. but it's going to, when it goes though, it's going to go quick. Yes. Yeah, like six, six, two, two Oh five yeah. moves so well, had the ball production this year. Yep. Going four, four or under going to jump through the roof. I know. And that's just, that's what makes me think that he's going to go ahead of like a Devon Witherspoon. I, I, if I could put a ticket on him being corner one taken, I would, I would do it. All right, let's do it. Let's do that then. I'm going to go. Normally, I'm a, I'm a Detroit Lions corner at their number 18 overall pick, but the board just really didn't fall to him the right way. And I don't want to like force a trench need here with Brzee and Carter off the board. So instead, I'll go Christian Gonzalez. Going Christian Gonzalez here at number six, which puts you back up on the board at number seven. Yeah, this is interesting for the Raiders here, right? I, be, for the obvious. The Derek Carr era is over. And... I think ultimately I I'm trying to caveat this pick. Mm -hmm. My gut is Trevor, a veteran will be a starter for the Raiders next year. Do they does McDaniels lure back Jimmy G? Um that's really the one that I think of. I'm not I mean Brady. Really oh yes, yes, yes. Right. Yes, everybody, yes. everybody, Brady. everybody thinks those are the two that I think are the most plausible for the Raiders. If you're if they're going with a veteran. It's it's Brady or Garoppolo. It's got to be a former New England Patriot guy, if you ask me. That makes sense. This is tricky. This is really really tricky. I like. Am I totally insane if I consider Witherspoon in this spot? They need corner help. The other they problem do need is corner help. they need corner help. They could use a guard. If I wanted to go Skaronsky, but I'm not going that way. Yeah. They have Chandler Jones for a lot of money. Max Crosby's great. I know Chandler didn't have the year they hoped for, but I don't think they have to take edge here. And then there's the Will Levis conversation that even if you sign Jimmy, can you draft Levis and sit him behind Jimmy? And I'm not the biggest Levis guy, but I'm just telling people this mock draft can't really have Will Levis falling out of out of it because it's going to happen. I think cor so, corner feels like a, a massive need for them. Would they take one at seven, though? That's the biggest question. But a lot of people probably over the last couple of years have asked themselves that question. Sauce is going to win defensive rookie of the year he went at four. J.C. Horn and Patrick Sertan are some of the best corners in football. They went early. No, it matters. I, sure. Yeah, I mean, you're you're totally right. I have not seen a corner this high to Vegas. So this would be the first mock draft that I've seen with them having a corner this high. Well, then there's my other side. Like, can they get a starter in another round? And I think you can. It's really hard. It's really, really. This is a really challenging. I think it comes. I think it comes down to this. In this mock draft scenario, do you think they land a vet. I do. So then we're not picking. So then we're not picking Levis. I don't think. So yeah, then you know, to win. I, I, so then I Especially think with Devante's money. Yeah. Then it frees you up. I'm going to take Witherspoon. All right. He's taking Witherspoon, folks. He's doing it. Where's I think people will come around. I listened to you and Renner on. It's just uh, football. Mm hmm. And you guys were some of the highest that I've heard talking Witherspoon in that light. Yeah. I've, I've finished the top of this corner class, and I won't spoil our ranking show, but I'm lockstep with you guys on being really high on him. I think people listening to this pod might find that pick jarring, but I'll ask you to be patient and try to revisit this same take in March and see if your opinion changes. I think we're going to get there. Maybe not seven, but I think we're going to get to a point where people talk about Witherspoon as a top 15 pick and it's not, it doesn't shock you anymore. Yeah. We're doing, we're doing uh corners on Thursday as a little, as a little, uh little teaser slash spoiler there. We'll do the cornerback ranking episode this coming Thursday. So you guys will get to hear all of our takes.
on cornerbacks. We got the Falcons up at number eight. I'm going to say they ride with Ritter. Is I'm this where they... Lamar goes? Oh, that'd be sweet. Oh, that'd be sweet. You hear him, folks? He went yes. from... Yes, We're screw that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> what a twist. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, we're uh, yeah, all right. That so Lamar, good. so Lamar's on the on the Falcons in this regard. Yes, um, and they're not making this pick. It's the um, Ravens' pick. Yeah, <sighs> we're not there yet. I would go. I mean, like I would go Miles Murphy here. Okay, I feel like the league's going to pick Tyree Wilson. I think so too. I mean, Ty- if Tyree Wilson's going to go top ten, this feels like the spot. Atlanta feels yeah. like the spot. I just wasn't super high on him. I was higher on Miles. He's going early. I know he's going. Is he, yeah, he's, is he going higher than Murphy? That's a good question. Yeah, I could see it. I don't know. <laughs> Miles Murphy. There's the emotion. Oh, There's God. the emotions, folks. Yeah, Every I time I watch I Miles know. Murphy and yeah. read about Miles Murphy, I'm like, he's going to get the Trayvon treatment just a little bit lesser. Like he won't go number one overall, but somebody will take him top ten because they're like, yeah. I'm going Miles yeah. Murphy. You did it. Yeah. You did it. Yeah. Murphy. Murphy. I think Miles Murphy, until proven otherwise. I'm gonna tell you that Miles Murphy is gonna go ahead of Tyree Wilson. And we're gonna make that definitive right here on this mock draft. That puts you with the with the Carolina Panthers up at number nine. Yeah, you made nine easy. Nine, I'm going with Will Levis here. Um the Panthers, I think, really need to draft and develop their own quarterback. Okay. Hey, Trevor, they uh I saw they are very high or they're they're interviewing your boy Ben Johnson. Oh, uh, I mean be they were, okay, here's the report. Be yeah, be a great move. I mean, I wasn't in the room, I didn't um, conduct the uh, interview you, or anything, but when you Google Ben Johnson, the headlines are David Tepper reportedly enamored with Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson in the lead to become Panthers head coach. Mm. Either way, I, sign me up. Hire Ben Johnson. Once again, I, get, I have my concerns with Levis, but at least if you draft him early, put him in the right infrastructure. So the Panthers, yeah, this is this is the route ultimately I think they go. I think they try to draft their next franchise quarterback uh, and do it pretty early. All right, Eagles up at number 10. Man, could I go another corner? I like corner for the Eagles. I love corner for the Eagles, especially if they they can't pay Bradbury. I know. But I also, like, I'm going to be honest, Tyree Wilson being here. Oh, yes. You know, he's just just a uniquely gifted defensive lineman, even though I'm still a little bit skeptical of him being a fifth-year guy and it took this long to get the production. I mean, you do see some of the production there. I still think he's kind of unpolished with how he uses his tools, but I mean, let's face it, it's the Eagles, right? You could stash that guy in the defensive line. You could play him in so many different spots. He's an inside-out yeah, kind of a fun. guy. How long is Hassan Reddick under contract for? Because he had Probably a, like two more years, he had, guaranteed. He a, oh, yeah, he sent he a three-year year. year. He had a great year. It's 16 sacks, dude. It was nuts. Yeah, it was insane. Oh, yeah, he's got a ton of dead cap, too. What is this? Yeah, so they got... All right, this is a strange contract, but yeah, next year, next year he carries twenty five mil dead cap, and he's only and he's only a uh, six million dollar cap hit. Okay, so they're not moving on from him. What's Brandon Graham's contract? Brandon Graham's at oh, this is the f- final year of his deal, and then these void. Yeah, years? he's getting up there. Man, he's also eighteen mil dead cap. Yeah, they got the void years after that. Yikes, he's 35, though. Yeah. Oh, Philly builds to the defensive line. It's Tyree. I think it is Tyree. I'm pulling up the depth chart just to make sure I'm not forgetting anybody. They obviously have Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham, Hassan Reddick. <laughs> All right, it's Tyree Wilson. I'm going to pick Tyree Wilson. That's That's got to be their guy. I think, this, I, I think that they would land on it. We're going Tyree. Tyree, number 10 for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Before we get to All 11. Right. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I can do this my house cleaning. I got to pay the bills. 
I'm going to pay the bills out here. What if I told you guys that you could invest in these players right now? Well, you can't right now. But after they're drafted, you can, thanks to our friends over at Mojo. Because with Mojo, it's not a what if. Now it's, oh, who's next? You can cash in on these guys as if they are stocks. Mojo is the all-new sports stock market that lets you invest in your favorite athletes and cash in on your passion. Sign up right now in the Apple App Store to get your first stock for free, worth up to tens of thousands of dollars. Over 300 players are currently listed on Mojo, so you can invest in rookies like Chris Olave, Drake London, comeback candidates Saquon Barkley, Geno Smith, superstars, guys who are superstars already like Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, everybody. Go long when a... And make money when an underrated diamond in the rough breaks out or short sell an overrated rival if that's how you want to make some change. Price to move with every play, every game, every headline, and you can buy and sell instantly anytime all year long. So the action never stops. Mojo is live in New Jersey right now. So download Mojo in the Apple App Store and start turning your playmakers into money makers. Must be 21 years or older to use Mojo and located in the great state of New Jersey to make trades. Have a gambling problem? Help is available. 1-800-GAMBLER. Visit mojo.com for more details. And the NFL playoff action continues. We're one step closer to the Super Bowl uh, with the divisional round coming up. Check out DraftKings Sportsbook, an, ofi- an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Plus, you got the all, all new and existing customers. This is for both. Can take a shot and an even bigger payout with DraftKings stepped-up same-game parlays. Boost your NFL winnings with each each leg and add up to 100% of your boosted odds. I love DraftKings. DraftKings has been fun. I've I've, uh, I've been able to do it since it became legal in Ohio, so it's been a lot of fun for me. And um, like I said, trying to remember when gets one catch. You won't hear from me again. I'll just be in the Bahamas with sunglasses on, and you guys can uh, you guys can do the pot on your own. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the promo code PFF. New customers can bet five dollars on the NFL divisional round and get two hundred in free bets instantly. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code PFF. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See, see show notes for details. Now you're up at eleven, Connor. Fire away. You know I spent my my ad break. I watched the Ravens on third and one hand the ball to Mark Andrews. He got, go. bl- he got how'd blown it? up yeah, on the go line for, of scrimmage. Yeah, how to go for him. <laughs> Fascinating. Man. <laughs> Tough times out here with Alamar R- Jackson. Riveting stuff. Riveting. So, the 11th overall pick belongs to the Tennessee Titans, mm-hmm. and this is probably how they'd love this scenario drawn up. There has not been an offensive lineman taken in the first mm-hmm. 10 picks of the draft. This one for me is going to be Peter Skaronsky. Okay. We talk about it every single show when we talk about Skaronsky. We love his inside-outside flexibility. The Titans need a lot of help at tackle right now with or without Taylor Luan. This is the perfect guy to get their run game going again. Gives you reliability and uh, a technically sound player in pass protection as well. So for the Titans here, this is one of those nitty gritty, you know, you're not uh, taking the home run cut. You're just steady stacking chips. I love Skaronsky for them, and I think you'll hear a lot about this one leading up to the draft. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, he, he he's somebody who would definitely fit in Tennessee. I, I, I don't know. I don't know Tennessee O-line thresholds. I need to look that up. I don't know if they have. I don't know if they're one of those teams that's like sticklers for the for the arm length or not. But this would be, that would be an interesting case to look up because if Skaronsky is on the board, he should certainly be within their wheelhouse. So that's the only thing that you really got to monitor. Other than that, I feel like the tape's been great for Skronsky over the last couple of years. One of the best offensive tackles in college football, two years running. So, well, what? they, uh, making sure they, did they draft him? No, they didn't. They, they traded for him. Who? Who we talking? They traded for Dennis Daly from the Panthers. But I, I was going to say his mock draftable looks like, you know, like when a drop of water falls from the ceiling and just hits the ground and leaves like a little, Thing yeah. on the floor yeah that's what his mock draftable looks like what's what's the what's daily what's dennis daily's arm arm length what's the arm length 22 is 22nd percentile yeah but 33rd and 3 eighths, which does hit the the old school threshold but yeah that is a th- that's the that's the old school line isn't it 33 and 3 eighths? 33 yeah. yeah i feel like it's getting a little dated but yes mm. ba- basically for those listening at home for you young pups at home that don't know this the general rule with offensive tackle arm length threshold was that, and some guys still live by this, if you don't have 33-inch arms, you cannot play tackle at the NFL level. But there's a plot hole in that 
because a young fella, Rashawn Slater came in right at 33. Um, there's a couple of weird ones, isn't there? Like some really good tackles. Don't Slater, have Slater was one that everybody complained about. Yeah, yep. about him having uh, him having short arms. Obviously, like people point to Joe Thomas because Joe Thomas had 33 inch arms, and that was like technically below what the old school like cutoff was. And he's been one of the best offensive tackles of the last like yep. you know two decades. So that that's that's why it kind of it's it's the tape. Like are you are you a good offensive lineman? Peter Skronsky is. That's why I don't I don't really have a problem with this here. I just didn't know if the Titans specifically have preferences. But no, that's a good question. Connor. Then they'll take Paris Johnson. Yeah, but yeah but I d I didn't think of this until right now. John Robinson's is not even there anymore. So oh. Oops. Right. So I, we don't know. We don't know what their thresholds are, actually. So anyways, Peter Scrantz, get 11. I like the choice. We don't even know who's trying things. That's true. That's true. Um, the uh, Houston Texans back on the clock at number 12. We had them taking CJ Stroud, uh, number two overall pick. I'm going to have them taking Quinn Johnston here at number I thought 12. that's where you're going. They just, look, I, I, I like the Peter Skronsky idea to them. I really do. They could certainly go defense as well. Defense needs some work. It needs some superstars. But Brandon Cooks wants the hell out of there. So he's going to be gone. Yeah. John Mechie, uh, there was a, a great report on him that he's doing really well. And I, I I really hope that he's back on the football field um, sooner rather than later. But like, if you take out John Mechie and Brandon Cooks from this team, it's Amari Rogers, uh, Philip Dorsett, Nico Collins, Chris Moore, Jordan Akins, Brevin Jordan whatever is left of OJ Howard and then that's it. I, like, you just, I, <laughs> Quinn Johnson's got to be the pick here at 12. If the board falls like this for Houston, they, they have to have some sort of go-to wide receiver. So I'm going to go Johnson here at 12. Kind of makes you wonder Trevor. And this is the hard part about being Houston. They would be a team best served when they take a quarterback to have already traded for a wide receiver on the veteran market. But mm -hmm. What guys you know, are going to really want to go there? You know who they should be in on in the wide receiver trade market? Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. I, I, DeAndre Hopkins, I think, would be good for them. Right? 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 It's the exact kind of player they need. Right? Honestly. Not a, they really do. Get Bill O'Brien to come back. Just, just get the whole band back. Yeah. Call, get J.J. Watt out of retirement. J.J. would play one more year for the Texans. What's Arian Foster doing? Derek, yeah. Derek Carr's brother, uh, David, doesn't have to defend Derek Carr to the Raiders fans anymore, so like he ain't doing anything. He can come oh, back. Oh, man. He's what like, is... Uh, Texas Dream Team. What is Matt Schaub up to? <laughs> He's got to be a backup somewhere, right? Where is he? No, Matt Schaub, uh, it looks like his last year was 2020 in the NFL, which is pretty remarkable. He was 39 years old. Wow, he booked a one-way ticket to Thailand. He's with Cliff. Didn't come. Didn't come back. <laughs> that was my favorite moment of the weekend. I want to be very clear with everybody because I, one, I don't want to fail in life that badly. Where, like, what I, do you mean? I, I want to fail what? in life to where I book a one way ticket to Thailand. I hope the I fail at this very episode so bad. I'm in Thailand next week. The man has paid millions for the next five years, guaranteed millions, multi million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like every team that needed an offensive coordinator in the world wanted to talk to Cliff Kingsbury this week. And the tweet was simply, he's bought a one-way ticket to Thailand. He is not interested. He's not interested. I put up the picture of Vinny Chase when he hid in Mexico after Medellin bombed. And um, I just think of that at Cliff. He's going to get calls from his agent, and he's going to be like, yeah, don't. Don't call <laughs> me again. <laughs> you're up at 13 with the jets all right 13 i know jets fans are probably so sick of hearing this one but they shouldn't be because this is what they need they need paris johnson oh yeah come on if the titans took paris johnson at 11 i would take skaronsky at 13 the jets need help on this offensive line um the the other needs that come to mind they need a safety they could use an off-ball linebacker. Two things that I don't think you need to take in the first round. Jets fans know that well. Hello, Darren Lee. Hello. Mm. Jamal Adams was a good pick. It just didn't work out. Um, I'm not going down this road. 
So oh, I didn't. I, I didn't put you on the road. You no, put yourself I did it to myself. Road. I really went into like full. You were the. Full. You you were the. What's the highway exit meme where it's like yeah, something yeah. completely normal? Jets draft discourse, just like Ribbon. hard right. <laughs> Dark memories. Paris Johnson Jr. is the pick, and okay. then and, and then you could kind of dream of an offensive line where, you know, if Becton is back in the fold, you're gonna have Lakin and ABT at guard. You still need a center if you don't reassign McGovern, mm-hmm. but it's good to have the kind of tackle depth that's gonna be Paris, Becton, Max Mitchell, maybe Dwayne Brown comes back, and you're not one injury away from disaster like you kind of felt like this year. Uh, Patriots are up at 14, and um, I'm gonna do it. He's doing it. I'm going to do it. I know what you're doing. Anthony Richardson at 14. I didn't think that's what you were doing, but yeah, wow, that's, that's we're out here. We're out here, folks. What has Mac Jones done? I ask you. The people. In my best Bane voice, what has Mac Jones done to make it so you would pass on what could be a wildly talented quarterback who brings you ability with both his arms and his legs at an extremely high ceiling at the pro level. And I'll tell you nothing. Mac has not done anything to warrant not making that pick. Now, am I saying that if you don't select a quarterback, if Anthony Richardson's off the board, if they don't love the quarterback, could Mac Jones be the starting quarterback of the Patriots next year? Yes. I think that's the case. But when you were presented with an opportunity, they could improve that. You should. So I'm going to take Anthony Richardson for the New England Patriots at 14. Give him some I mean, then if they still want to move on from Mac, but not play Richardson, they could start Bailey Zappi. So, oh. <laughs> I mean, of course, yeah. All right, yeah. Fifteen, yeah. the of Green course. Bay Packers. Oh man, Green Bay. They mm-hmm. are. I don't know if Aaron Rodgers is going to be there. I guess the pick Let's doesn't really change. Is. Let's, Let's say, say, he say he is. Okay. Let's say he is. Let's say he is. For me, in the... oh man, okay. You're going through it. I have a lot of, I have two different ideas here. Okay. One's very fun. One is very steady Eddie for Green Bay. Can you tell me both of them? And can like, can we choose? Can we have like a live vote? A discourse? Can we phone a friend? Can we ask the audience? One is to take Broderick Jones because this offensive line still needs help. Mm-hmm. bakhtiari has been hurt a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously there's there's plenty to like about a guy like Zach Tom, but I like Broderick Zach. Jones. I like Zach Tom. Yeah, as you should, but he can only play one position. The other idea, you can't prove which that. I'm much more fond of, significantly more fond of, mm-hmm. and I know they won't do it because they never do this, and it drives me absolutely insane, is that they should take Jackson Smith and Jigba and play him in the mm-hmm. slot and play Christian Watson out there with Jackson Smith and Jigba and your two really good running backs and just throw the shit out of the ball. But and I'm going to do it because this is my mock draft pick yeah, and not split. yours, Brian Gutekinds. So, wow. Packers fans, I am your new king. Wow. Jackson Smith and Jigba, you are a Green Bay Packer with Aaron Rodgers throwing you the football. Man, this mock did not go the way I thought it was going to go, and I love it. It's I agree. Great. It's actually had some really good plot twists. Uh, it's not. It's not really cut and dried. Yeah, and not nice. just and not just like four kicks. You know, I think that this is uh, this is good. We, we we're no, thinking we're of, talking through it. New scenarios. We're talking through it. You know, that's all you can do with life. Really, just talk through it. Lessons of mock draft and with life. Washington Commanders up at number sixteen. Speaking of talking through, you got a major cornerback need, a major quarterback need. All due respect to Sam Howell. Offensive line could certainly be a need for them as well. I think with Cam Smith and Keeley Ringo on the board, that's probably where they go, though. I'll go Keeley. I'm going to take Keeley for them at 16. Okay. I just think that he is going to end up being, you know, he's he's bigger, he's faster, he's stronger. Is he as fluid? Maybe not. But these guys do play the same, I think, kind of style of defense. Um I think they're going to be man coverage guys. They're guys that can cover vertically. Did you think about Porter at all, or he was out for you? I, yeah, that's a no. I, 
I can't wait to do corners on Thursday because I've I've seen I've seen these guys like I've watched a couple of games from them, but I haven't done the full eval yet. But I just feel like Akili is going to be that guy at 16. Like if any of these guys, I feel like Akili is going to go higher than them. Reserve all right to change my opinion in three days, but I'm going to take Keely Ringo do. at 16. I'm going to take Keely Ringo at 16. Two picks left in the draft. This is yep. my final pick. The Steelers yep. are on the clock at 17. This is where Broderick Jones comes off the board. Yeah, smart. You said it a lot. I gave you a layup. You really did. Wasn't this one of my five perfect fits? I think it was. Yes, it was. It was. Funny how life works. You're welcome. I mean, yeah, Broderick has some technical flaws to work on, as we've said. I, th- I think specifically with his hands and his punch and understanding the use of leverage and not allowing defenders to manipulate that leverage against him. But the raw package is special. Um, he's put out some really good film this year. He's gotten so much better his first year as a full-time starter. And I think for the Steelers, they need they need a guy to tackle. They need one of these dudes to tackle. And they capitalize on what's essentially the end of the run before the tier starts to drastically change. I can't argue with it. Can't argue with it. I like the pick. Lions are up with the final selection here at number 18 because we're only doing the non-playoff teams. You know, no idea what you're going to do here, by the way. So for, no idea. you remember, one of my favorite fits that I liked for the Detroit Lions was tight end Darnell Washington because yep. of the versatility that he would be able to give them and how uniquely gifted he was in both size and athletic ability. Michael Mayer is still here, though, and I just feel like Dan Campbell's going to love Michael Mayer. Right. How could he not? I mean, you move on from TJ Hawkinson. You got to sit there at home, aren't in the playoffs. You got to watch TJ Hawkinson absolutely ball the hell out for the Minnesota Vikings, even though they didn't win. And I'm not saying that that they totally regret the trade or anything. I think there's other things that go into it rather than just like the value of what have been this would have been this year for them. But they do need that tight end presence again. And Michael Mayer is one hell of a blocker. And he's just such a natural for the position. Is he going to be an, uh, an, an uber athlete at the pro level? No, I don't think so. But he understands the position so well. He understands leverages. He gets coverages. He blocks his ass off. Like, he is just a true three down kind of a tight end. So with 18, I'm, I'm going to go with Michael Mayer here to round things out. What do you think about it? I love it. I, I think it's perfect for them. I think Mayer actually fits the mold a little bit more of what Campbell would like at the position because I think he, he'll have a better blocking career than Hawkinson will. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I have no problem allocating resources to a special tight end there. You, you did make me go look at Hawkinson, man. In Minnesota. Dude, he went off. He went nuts. Yeah. Nuts. He I played like 10 been... games in Minnesota, over 500 yards, 60 catches, three touchdowns. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he quietly climbed towards 1,000 yards this year. He finished with 914 and six. I mean that's that's big time tight end. Was that, and that well. was like in the regular season, right? Or is that include yes, playoffs yes, too? Yes, yes, yes. No, that's that's seventeen games. So he's he's uh, over it because he got over a hundred yards today. So he got over the thousand yard the mark playoffs, like on he, the on the campaign. Yeah, it's um, it's it, I really killed that trade when it happened, and I think I, it slowly turned for me to a trade that maybe it just is great for both sides. We'll see mm-hmm. what the Lions do with those picks because I still think. Hawkinson's a really good player that could have been a part of everything going on there. Mm-hmm. But I think it's, it's, I've definitely have turned my tude that it might be a lot. It might be great for both sides. Don't feel that way about Chase Claypool and we'll die on that hill, but we'll get back to that another day. Yikes. Not good. Big yikes. Not good. Not good. Ryan. Not good. Is well, he who? What? what? A free agent? No, right. He can't be Claypool. No way. Is he? There's no way. He has one more year left. Mm. Yikes. It's tough. That's what you call tough. All right, there we go. That is a <laughs> non-playoff team mock draft there for you guys. We had the Indianapolis Colts moving up to number one overall to select quarterback Bryce Young. At number two, the Houston Texans selected C.J. Stroud. Three, I tried to get Connor out of that three spot. Tried to, I, tried, I tried to do it, Lions fans. I tried, but ultimately... Connor stuck at number three with the Arizona Cardinals, took Will Anderson. He also took Jalen Carter for the Chicago Bears after their trade down from one to four. Uh, for the Seahawks, uh, they went Brian Brzee at number five. Christian Gonzalez, the corner from Oregon, went to the Lions at six. Devon Witherspoon, the corner from Illinois, went to the Raiders at seven. Miles Murphy, the edge rusher from Clemson, went eight to the Falcons. Will Levis, quarterback from Kentucky, 
went number nine to the um, Carolina Panthers. Philadelphia Eagles, uh, we ended up landing on Tyree Wilson, the edge rusher from Texas Tech at number 10. 11, Tennessee Titans took Peter Skaronsky, the offensive tackle for Northwestern. 12, Quinn Johnston, wide receiver from TCU, to Houston, which gave them a haul of C.J. Stroud and uh, Quinn Johnston. 13, Paris Johnson Jr. to the Jets. Uh, 14, Anthony Richardson to the New England Patriots. 15, Jackson Smith and Jigba to the Green Bay Packers. Uh, 16, Keeley Ringo, the corner from Georgia to the Washington Commanders. Steelers at 17 took Broderick Jones, the offensive tackle from Georgia. And then for the final pick, I selected Michael Mayer at number 18 for the Detroit Lions, which gave them a haul of Christian Gonzalez and Mayer. Let us know what you guys thought of this mock draft, of some of the selections, whether it's for your favorite team or not. Uh, let us know about some of the dis- discussions that we had about some of the picks and the trade down opportunities. We'd also, of course, love to hear from you, right? We talked at the top, top of the podcast and some of the, our favorite things we get to do is kind of sit down and listen to the comments that you guys give on the episodes, on our theories and get in on it as well. This is a podcast that is not just Connor and I talking out to you guys. You guys are talking back. It's a full community podcast for the NFL draft and we absolutely love it when that's the case. So fire away. If you're watching this one on YouTube, the comment section on YouTube is a really great way to be a sounding board for your opinions here also if you want to hit us up on twitter at tampa bay trey at connor j rogers you could also do the same on instagram as well connor anything else before we get out of here it was fun man it was good to get one in the books for the new year uh even though it was only the teams that are not in the playoffs but before you know it we'll blink we'll have everybody in the fixed order i think we'll do plenty of updating as we go throughout the year and it's going to be really fun to see how the senior bowl and the combine and the process really changes a lot of things but I think we're pretty close right now. I think we have a lot of the guys in the right ranges, barring a few surprises. As of this podcast being out on a Monday, this today, this Monday, is the final date for college players to declare for the NFL draft. Right. So on Wednesday's wow. episode, we're going to have more of an updated order. The playoffs are going to be solidified. Uh, we'll know what teams won. We'll kind of talk about the playoff games a little bit, talk about the teams that are no longer in the playoffs, what they could be doing in the draft, what went wrong, and then we'll go over what is the final draft pool for the 2023 NFL draft. And that's all before we get to an updated cornerback rankings episode that we're going to have on Thursday. Appreciate everybody watching and listening. I'm Trevor Sikama. That's Connor Rogers. Thank you guys for so much for listening to the NFL Stock Exchange podcast. See you guys on Wednesday.